Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to today's special topic where we will be discussing the Medusa Locker Ransomware. Now recently we've been covering a lot of cybersecurity related topics such as the Adobe and UPS phishing vulnerabilities. We also showed Office's proactive approach to preventing users from clicking on suspicious or phishing emails. So we first learned of this Medusa Locker Ransomware courtesy of our antivirus Webroot and their blog which posted about it on the 25th of October. In this blog, they mentioned that the, while it's unclear how the Medusa locker is spreading, the victims have been confirmed around the world in just the last month. By starting with the preparation phase, this variant can ensure that the local networking functionality is active and maintain access to network drives. After shutting down security software and deleting shadow volume copies, it begins encrypting files while setting up self-preservation tasks. So pretty much the first big note to make there is regarding the local networking functionality, confirming that that is active, making sure it can get access to network drives. Now this is probably how it's spreading itself once it has gotten onto one machine in your organization. It's using network drives to either clone itself so that other users or other unsuspected, unexpected users can go ahead and click on this file and then unfortunately, then they are suffering from the same ransomware on their machine and that's how it's spreading within the organization. It is unclear how it's getting on the original machine, but as to how it is actually getting from one machine to the next, I'm pretty confident that it's because of the, um, the network drives. After it shuts down the security software, which is the first one of the first steps it would take after making sure that it has access to the network drives, is deleting shadow volume copies so that the users are unable to restore to a previous copy. Now with Windows 10, you're able to restore to a, pre a restore point on your machine, but by deleting these shadow copies, it prevents them from doing so, so they don't bypass the encryption that is gonna occur. Once it's encrypted the files, it's gonna learn, it's gonna start setting up self-preservation tasks. Now one of these tasks may be possibly copying itself, putting itself in the startup, so in case the user was able to actually search for it, dig for the ransomware software, the original, the executable file, or the file, wherever it may be, and remove it when the computer is restarted. If it's in the, so um, the startup, it'll just be able to boot back up into the system and then cause more damage. So let's take a further look into this Medusa Locker ransomware. So the ransomware was found by the Malware Hunter team at the end of September, so it is relatively new. Now, of course, this article that was first brought to our attention was in towards the end of October, but of course, it would have taken some time for it to really start to be seen amongst um, unexpected victims across the world. And while it is not currently known how the ransomware is being distributed, there have been a steady amount of submissions to the ID ransomware site since then. So this may be, we've kind of discussed how it's possibly spreading within the organization, but how it's getting from different organizations around the world. Is it through emails? Is it through um, links? It's right now, it's unknown. They give you a little bit of a description as to how much it's increased over the past month. So of course, towards the middle of October, you're gonna see it peaking. Now after this peak, it's gonna kind of decrease. This could be caused by people becoming more aware of the ransomware, um, antiviruses becoming more aware of the ransomware to prevent it from being able to remember one of those steps it was gonna take where it tries to remove security software, try and adapt to this ransomware. Now of course, just like these antiviruses are gonna adapt, this is also how the malicious actors operate as well. They're gonna to adapt to any adaptations that those um, antivirus companies or softwares have also made. And it's starting to spike and go up again. Now, this goes into a bunch of details about actually how the, the ransomware works, but we don't really have to worry too much about that. One thing I want you guys to make sure is that you are being safe when using anything on the internet. That's the main primary thing. There's gonna be a lot of different phishing emails that you can receive. We've kind of gone through a bunch of those in the past. However, ones that contain ransomware are just that much more detrimental to your organization. If you are ever in a situation where you experience ransomware or have had in the past, I'm sure you're aware of the cost in recuperating from that experience. A lot of the time, in some cases, if you don't have backups in place, which we offer for all of our clients as a preventative measure in case anything like this may happen in the future, um, if you don't have those things in place, you're in a situation where you may have only two choices. Either you continue from scratch without having access to any of your files, which can be just as costly as the second option, which would be paying the ransom. Now, as I'm gonna say to you guys, there's certain things you can do just to make sure that you don't end up being in this situation. It's gonna be practice the five second rule. Think before you click. Take those five seconds before you click on any suspicious emails, any links, going to any websites, downloading anything that doesn't look legitimate. Taking those extra five seconds can really save you or your organization. 
next is going to be practice safe browsing. If you're going on the internet, you're looking to download anything, make sure you're downloading it from the legitimate site. If you're looking for any free versions of software that is usually not, that's usually a paid software, trust me, any of those things that are offering it are most likely too good to be true. And you're going to want to make sure that you're either getting the legitimate software or not using it. So go to the legitimate um, domains. You can always check if a domain is legitimate if you're on Google Chrome by looking for the lock right above right next to the domain name. Here you'll be able to see their certificate. You can validate the certificate from here by seeing who it's been issued to, who it's been issued by, and when it has been valid. These are the kind of things you're gonna to wanna to do when you're practicing safe browsing. But guys, I can't emphasize it enough. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Don't download anything that looks suspicious. You, would, you may regret it in the future if you do, just by chance, end up downloading this Medusa Locker ransomware. So I just want to get, bring that up to you guys, let you know about any new and upcoming ransomware, any malware in general that's really taking the world by storm. And currently the Medusa Locker ransomware is doing that. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Um, also, have you experienced any ransomware in your past? Let me know in the comment section below as well. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified whenever we go live each and every single weekday between 12 and 5 p.m. Eastern time. Appreciate it, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And thank you for tuning in.